Good morning. Happy Monday, you guys. Praise God for another day. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome back to another video, you guys, here on the channel. This channel belongs to the Lord. If it's your first time here, hello. My name is Beautiful Joy. This is a Christian channel. This channel is actually... Um, a ministry for the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm a born again believer. God saved me from a lukewarm lifestyle back in 2013 and there was no going back. So praise God. I'm a mother of three sons. I just love the Lord. And so God has called me into social, social, why do I say that wrong? Social, <laughs> social media ministry. Yes, we know the internet. We know that social media can be a hot mess. We all know that. We all understand that, okay? <laughs> you don't have to be a believer to know that, okay? But I believe God has turned around a lot of evil for the good, okay? So God is always going to get his glory. And I believe God is putting his people in different places, all over the place. Social media, you know, um, all types of ministries, you know, and ministries that are that are not even on social media. You know, you would, we would never even hear about them, you know. So God is at work, okay? The Spirit of God is moving upon this earth. The Antichrist spirit is moving, of course. But the Spirit of God, we know, is moving. And God is raising up some mighty warriors. Many of you, hallelujah, praise God. So I just pray we all remain faithful. We, re we uh, remain obedient. We continue to wear the full armor of God. Praise God and just allow God to continue to renew our minds. So thank you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I just invite you into this video. I ask you to bless everybody that's watching this, Father God. And if anybody comes across this and they're lukewarm, they might be an atheist. They might be worshiping false gods, whatever the case may be. They're just trapped in sin. They may feel like there's no way out. Father God, I ask that you will just give them a new desire today to want to know the real truth because I know many people are searching, Father God, but they're just looking in the wrong areas, Father God. They're looking in and tapping into the wrong things and a lot of it is witchcraft, Father God. So forgive them, help them, open their eyes, open their ears, Father God, soften their heart <clears throat> in the mighty name of Jesus and God help them to forgive because a lot of people are struggling with forgiveness and we know your word talks about if we are dealing with unforgiveness that you will allow us you will allow us to be tormented yes because of unforgiveness you take unforgiveness very very serious lord so i just pray for anybody that's struggling with unforgiveness let it go let god deal with folks and forgiveness is for us i just felt led to call that out so praise god thank you god for this day um, September 23rd, 2024. God, we just give you all the honor and praise on this channel. This channel belongs to you. Um, I ask you, Father God, for continued strength for myself and for the body of Christ as a whole, Father God. Your remnant is here and God help us to continue to walk in humility. God, we just rebuke all pride in the mighty name of Jesus. God, help us to continue to cast down any demonic thought or imagination, plans, assignments, any craziness, any fiery dart that the enemy is trying to throw at us, Father God. And that's why we have to have on the full armor of God. So thank you, Father, that you are already way ahead of us. You are in this battle with us. We're never alone, Father God. You are way ahead of us. Yes, God, we have your holy angels who fight for us. We have the, the gift of the Holy Spirit, those who are truly born again. We thank you, we honor you, and we give you the glory on this channel. Amen. <clears throat> thank you, Jesus. So you guys, oh, I just love to encourage the body of Christ. It just really blesses me. And you know, this, this, you know, every time I turn on the camera, get on here, it, it really just blesses me, you know, because that's what happens when you just allow the Holy Spirit to take over, you know, because we never want to quench the Spirit of God. We got to continue to let the Holy Spirit operate in us and just let the Spirit of God take over and overflow, okay? So praise God. I love you all, brothers and sisters. And if you have not had a chance, go back to some of my pre-recorded videos. Um, there's some major, <clears throat> a couple of major warnings that God wanted me to give out to the body of Christ. Okay, because we all know we're seeing a huge shift take place. We know that a line has been drawn in the sand. And we know that 2024 has been um, prophesied as a year of exposure. We're already seeing that. I mean, exposure everywhere, okay? It's not just people 
in the entertainment industry. We're seeing it in the churches. We're seeing it in our everyday lives, within our family, on our jobs and ministries. It's just all over, okay? So uh, God is truly marking who belongs to him. But you know what? A lot of people are waking up. So praise God for that. So let's continue to be the light, continue to be the thought that God has called us to be because, you know, that's our our duty as a born again believer. You know, God has get, given us the great commission to go out and share the good news of the gospel, to baptize and to make other disciples. OK, so God did not call us to be here to just dim our light and go hide somewhere in a corner. No. So let's just continue to keep on the form of for armor of God continue to pray fast, um, connect with like-minded individuals, other Christians, because it's so important that we're with like-minded Christians. So we're not getting advice from anything that is part of the world, you know, because the world is going against God. The world is antichrist. Okay. Oh, so Father God. So you guys get this book here because um, I've been showing you guys this book for a minute. Because um, I really like the teachings of Derek Prince. He he passed away already. He's gone to be with the Lord. I believe God gave him a special gift of teaching the word. And I just love how he, he, he explained and broke down the scriptures, you know. So Derek Prince, many of you guys have heard of him, maybe not. But God recently told me to read this, you know. And um, he actually told me, too, this is what's happening in the body of Christ. Pride has risen up. Pride has taken over a lot of brothers and sister in the faith, including those in leadership, you know, pastors, apostles, deacons, prophets, teachers, the list goes on, you know, even <clears throat> those who have been called to evangelize. It's just all over the place. Okay. And we know the world is, is promoting pride because the world is always going to promote pride. The world would never promote anything that is, that has light. The world is in darkness and the world is going to continue to promote darkness. Okay. The world is never going to, um, side with God and his, in God, in God's laws. No way. Okay, so I'm in chapter one and chapter one talks about a universal law. And really quickly, it talks about how, um, let me see here. They're talking about how there's various kinds of laws that operate throughout the universe. We know that there are physical laws, but there's also spiritual laws and God has been helping us um, to understand a lot of, about spiritual laws. And God has called quite a few brothers and sisters, sisters in Christ, but it's a very small circle. Have you guys noticed that it's a very small circle of true born again believers, women and men of faith who are actually teaching and just helping the body of Christ to go through a lot of deliverance. Because when we learn the truth about anything, um, and we've been learning about spiritual warfare a lot, right? It's th that's a deliverance. We're going through a lot of deliverance, you know, and so we're learning about um, spiritual laws. There is a brother in Christ who really goes deep into things like that, like the spiritual laws. And that's Pastor Kevin Ewing. And um, if you get connected to him, please, that would be awesome. Um, once again, his name is Pastor Kevin Ewing. And I'll try to put his recent video here in the comment section, the description box, always check the comment section, always check the description box for any links. And if I promise you guys a link and I forget, let me know. I'll be happy to find it. Don't hesitate to reach out you guys. Okay. Um, spiritual laws. Yes. There are spiritual laws. So like for instance, there's a physical law of gravity, right? So we know we can't just jump out of a building because we know we're going to go down. That That's a law. And you know, <laughs> that's a physical law. The physical law of gravity dictates the results. Um, I'm, wait, hang on. I don't want to say that, but we all know there's a physical law of gravity. So we're not going to just go jump out of a, a tall building because we will die, right? So anywho, um, physical, I'm sorry, spiritual laws, spiritual laws. Yes. And I love what Derek Prince says here. He says, when we break God's laws, whether they are physical. He says, when we break God's laws, if they're a physical law or a spiritual law, that law actually breaks us when we go against them. So when we break God's, God's physical laws, 
When we break God's physical laws and spiritual laws, we go against them, right? Because if we're breaking God's law, we're going against him, you know? Anti. Those laws are going to actually break us, okay? Let me wait for this um, ambulance. Oh, Jesus. Lord God, help them. Jesus. So it says here, there are spiritual laws that govern what happens to us, what happens in our individual lives, and what happens in the universe at large. It is one of those universal spiritual laws that we'll be exploring throughout this book. The precept is stated for the first time in the New Testament by Jesus himself. Whoever exalts himself and will be humble, and whoever humbles himself will be, will be exalted. Matthew 23, 12. And you can look at also Luke 14, 11, and then Luke 18, 14. So Luke 14, 11, and Luke 18, 14, they both talk about how basically if we humble ourselves, God's going to exalt us. But if we um, rise up in pride, God is going to humble us, okay? We're going to go down lower, okay? So God lifts up the ones that are humble, and he brings down the ones who are puffed up with pride. And, you know, that makes me think about how the scriptures say, you know, pride comes before the fall and pride comes before destruction, right? Okay. Thank you, Father God. Oh, Jesus. It says here, Jesus continually reminded his hearers that there is a law at work in our lives, one that also governs the entire universe. It is the law that relates to humility and pride. And that's what this book is about. Okay. <clears throat> so Jesus said, whoever <clears throat> exhibits pride will be humbled. Whoever exhibits humility will be ex uh, ex exalted. How come I can't say that? Exalted. 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 Wow. But there's a lot of good. I, I'm, so far, I'm loving what I'm reading here in the first chapter you guys so the first chapter is titled a universal law and i took some notes here and i'm just reading through i'm like halfway through the chapter i'm going to continue it today i just wanted to point out these key points that i highlighted because i'm like wow um very 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 important for the body of christ yes lord because pride has really taken over a lot of hearts of those within the church right so God mandates us to humble ourselves. Do you realize that? Humility is a mandate. It is our responsibility, <clears throat> okay? Oh, Jesus. Humility is not a nice religious emotion. As a matter of fact, it really does not operate primarily in the area of emotion. Sometimes we try to feel humble and we check ourselves to see if we are really feeling humble enough. That is a mistake. Rather than being in the area of emotions, Humility is in the area of the will. Furthermore, it is expressed in action. We can and we must ha humble ourselves by a decision of our own wills. No one else can do this for us. We must do it for ourselves. Wow. So humility is expressed in action. So we got to humble ourselves. Nobody can't humble. Nobody can't make me humble myself or yourself we have to do it on our own it's a choice okay either we're gonna humble ourselves on our own or we're not gonna do it you know who jesus james 4 10 says humble yourselves before the lord and he will lift you up you know and when i was reading about this when i was reading this i kept hearing god was speaking to me a lot of people you notice a lot of people in this generation especially within the church because you know um there's a lot of sin in the church there's a lot of lukewarmness um jezebel has been tolerated within the church um this is what the lord was telling me as i was reading this chapter chapter one of this book that a lot of people want to be lifted up he kept repeating that a lot of people want to be lifted up but they don't want to humble themselves and this could be people in the world as well it's just people in general people want god to lift them up and put them into a certain status in life or whatever the case may be but they don't want to humble themselves that is very dangerous so god kept repeating that and i was just like wow thank you holy spirit so james 4 10 um it says here it also says humble yourselves 
You and I cannot ask somebody else to do this for us. It is our mandate and our our responsibility alone. We are mandated to humble ourselves. It's our responsibility. And I love what the scripture says here. 1 Peter 5, 5 through 6. 1 Peter 5, 5 through 6 says, All of you clothe yourselves with humility towards one another because God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand that he may lift you up in due time. And when I read that, I was like, yeah, I thought about too how we want to be lifted up in our time. No, God is going to, God requires us to humble ourselves. It's a mandate, what we just read. So it's a, we are mandated by God, especially if you're a born again believer, we are mandated by God to humble ourselves. Okay. Nobody can't do it for us. And then God will lift us up because he says in his word multiple times, we were just reading a second ago, God raises up the humble. Okay. Um, he's going to lift us up in due time. And that just makes me think about, wow, um, we could think about certain situations, certain times in our life where we felt like that was our time, but it really wasn't. So it's going to be in God's perfect timing, right? In his due time. God's timing is always better. And the more we grow in our faith, the older we get. You know, um, I just turned 45 this year. I'm just like, Lord, your timing is always better. Okay, I'm learning more of that by the grace of God. And God is going to allow things God is gonna allow us to be lifted up in due time. And we gotta be patient. We can't force God to speed it up. We can't try to hit a fast forward button or try to irrit like nag God, you know, okay, is it time yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? No, God does not operate like that, right? Because he sees our heart. He sees our intentions, right? Thank you, Jesus. Clothe yourselves with humility. Yes, we are required to clothe ourselves with humility. Yes, Lord. So that's all I wanted to talk about right now. Like once again, I'm in chapter one and chapter one is titled The Universal Law. I'm like halfway done with the chapter. And this is the book, you guys. You can get it on Amazon. Derek Krantz. So, oh, Father God, I knew when I was reading through this, I wanted to sit down and just talk to you guys about it and just go over these points that I highlighted. So basically, if... You will, if you are willing to humble yourself, brothers and sisters, if you are willing to humble yourself, God will lift you up in due time, okay? So, Lord, help us all. And, you know, the more you grow in your faith, too, I hate pride. I really do. And, you know, that's good because God says to hate what he hates and love what he loves. And God does not like pride. Oh, no. Now, the world likes pride, of course, because the world is always going against God, it's Antichrist. You know, it's always going to be the opposite. The world is full of darkness, you know. And the Bible says the God of this world is Satan, and he has blinded the minds of those who walk in darkness. And it's so scary. It's so sad to see people talking about pride, pride, pride. And they they're a lot of times like you, you could just feel like, how do I want to say this? We know a good majority of them that are saying that that really believe that in their heart, they don't even know what they're doing. They don't know what they're doing. They're absolutely ignorant to what they're saying about pride, their perspective on pride. They think pride is the good thing, you know? And it's so sad because they don't understand that that alone will stop them from entering into God's kingdom for all of eternity because of pride. You know, so, you know, God says my people perish for the lack of knowledge. So, brothers and sisters, we got to continue to walk in humility. Let's continue to clothe ourselves in humility and tell the world about Jesus and preach the true gospel and to preach the words of the scriptures, you know. Um, yeah, let's just pray that people will just really humble themselves, including the church, you know, because you really have to humble yourself in order to truly, really submit to God in the first place. Like submitting to God and turning away from this world and just coming to the end of yourself, you really have to humble yourself. I know that's how it went down for me back in 2013. Like I really humbled myself. You know, God allowed me to go through some stuff. He, he chastised me. And the Bible says he chastises the ones that he loves, right? And so, yeah, it's just really sad. 
when we see people lost in this generation, just lost, lost. And they think being prideful is a good thing. And they have taken the rainbow and perverted that. Lord God, forgive them. Because we know the rainbow represents God's promise. The old world before the flood, God made a promise. You know, that's God's covenant, the rainbow. And we see how the enemy has perverted it and he has manipulated and bamboozled a lot of people. But let's just continue, continue to just pray for folks and uh, continue to be the light that we have been called to be. Ooh, so, Father God, help me. Father God, forgive me. Father God, um, where I lack humility, Father God, just help me. Help my brothers and sisters and help our children as well, Father God, because... You have called us to raise up our children in the ways of the Lord. Many of us are parents, grandparents. We have nieces and nephews. Many of us are in charge of children, no matter the relationship, Father God. So yeah, we have to teach them about humility and teach them the scriptures. We have to teach them what your word says. And oh, Father God, help us to have faith when we read your word. It's also important. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray this prayer. Yes, Lord, and once again, if anybody's watching this and they have not fully submitted to God, they have not really humbled themselves to you, Father God. They may be lukewarm, Father God. They may be a backsliding Christian, Father God. I just pray that you would give them a new desire to want to know you, Father, to truly, truly accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior and turn away from this world to repent, to be born again, to be saved, repentance, repentance, Lord God. Help them understand the significance of repenting because repenting is is, is uh, a part of coming to you, Father God. We have to repent. We have to turn away from this world because we hear a lot of false teachers and um, prophets talking about repenting is not a requirement, Father God. And we know that's a lie. We know that's a lie, God. So, yes, Lord, help them. We stand in the gap for them, Father God. We intercede for those who don't even understand what they're doing, Father God. Help them to humble themselves before you and to really seek you, God, like truthfully. In the mighty name of Jesus, we love you, Lord. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this time of this discussion of pride and humility, Father God. We really need to cast down all the pride every single day, Father God. Our flesh wants to run towards it, but um, as your children... We have power and authority to trample over snakes and scorpions. We have power and authority to trample over the enemy. Yes, Lord God, help us to keep on the full armor of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray this prayer. Amen. So um, God bless you guys. I'm going to continue reading the rest of this chapter and just taking my time and reading through and highlighting and I'll be back because I, I know I know that when I started to read this book, I wanted to kind of go through it and talk about some things. And there's like 10 chapters. So expect some more videos down the road. Um, you know, some highlights from this book. This book is awesome. Every Christian needs to read this. Of course, the Bible's number one. This is not in place of the Bible for anybody that's wondering. But um, yes, get you this book, Amazon. And it's like under $10. I don't remember how much I paid for it, but very affordable. God bless you. God bless you guys. Love you all. Take care. Bye.